Welcome to the Rundown <laughs> Shakeout Podcast. I feel like we unintentionally matched our clothing to the weather today. Yeah, because November is gray as heck. Sure is. But you can make the most of it by enjoying the outdoors with a run. Yep. In the dark. That was nerdy. Woke up that this was morning. And- <laughs> it, was, it was a positive outlook. Yeah, we, I both, that. we both woke up this morning and exercised. In the dark. In the dark. And we're going to go exercise in the dark after work. Yeah, because that's what happens in daylight savings time. <laughs> and in the middle of the day, I exercised inside. Yeah. So we needed to take some vitamin D. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I do. Me too. I was joking yesterday that I need to get uh, a get your iron checked tattooed <laughs> yeah. on my forehead. I have a few supplement things I need to take care of. Yeah. Hey, that's a good PSA. That is a good. That's a good fall PSA when that you're is ramping good. up your training yep. again. You know, like you ran your fall marathon, you took your break, and now you're gonna like you know continue your running through the winter. Yeah. Get on your supplements. It's the best time, according to Trent Stellingworth. It's the best time because your body is exposed to the least amount of inflammation during your relative downtime, mm. so you can actually absorb all of the goodness of your supplements during that time. And of course, yes, iron, vitamin D, vitamin D, fun little. Do you fact. make an overdose on vitamin D? No, you can't because yes, it's water you, soluble. No, you can overdose on vitamin D. Well, I think you'd have to be pouring. Like, I'm sure you can overdose on anything technically, but it is water soluble, so it's not gonna create huge level of toxins. Someone told me that not I was advised. that I was near a vitamin D overdose because I was on a really high dosage and I was on the drops when you like put it on your oh, hand, yeah. you lick it up, and. Uh, <laughs> I was, love the visual of that. Thank and you. I was told that I was getting very close to dangerous levels of vitamin D. We have full disclaimer <laughs> for any lawyers out there. Madeline Kelly and Kate Van Buskirk, um, employees of Grip Publishing, are not permitted to be handing out medical advice. So these are just oh, anecdotal tips. Not, I didn't even uh, take chemistry in grade 11. Okay. So that says it all. <laughs> anyway. Upping your vitamin D dosage a little bit probably won't hurt. Consult a medical professional before taking any supplements. (laughs) That's the disclaimer of the day. That sounded so much like the end of an American drug commercial. I really did. You may experience nausea, heartburn, and just (laughs) 17,000 other side effects. If your right arm arm falls off, please consult your medical professional. (laughs) Only if your right arm falls off. (laughs) Otherwise, you're probably fine. If the left falls off. (laughs) Not a big deal. That's not our fault. No. We don't know why that (laughs) happened. Unrelated. Unrelated. Is is this a sign of vitamin D deficiency? The giggles? Or is this just end of the day on Tuesday? I overdosed. Did you not listen? (laughs) So that's what's happening right now. Yeah, this is a a real life example. (sighs) Glad there's an explanation. Vitamin D. O D. O. Oh, man. (laughs) All right. So some things happened in the world of running this week. Start with the roads, go all the way to Japan, where 400 runners broke 70 minutes for the half marathon in the same race at the same time on the same day. Crazy. So I like um, having like comparative stats for this to put it in context for people. I believe there have been 31 Canadians that have broken 70 minutes in the half marathon in 2019. In an entire year at multiple different marathons right. across um, how many different places and yes. spaces. And this was one day, one race, one race, 400 men. 400 men? Yeah. That doesn't include, were there women that did it? No, the first woman crossed in 120. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's actually almost as shocking as 400 men did it. No women broke 80 minutes. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that this was a university primarily race because this was a qualifier for Ekaden. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. For the Hakone Ekaden team, um, which draws over a million spectators Mm -hmm. every year. Should we explain what Ekadens are? Because they're really interesting. Yes, we should. So Ekaden is a form of relay, Mm -hmm. but the number of team members and the duration of the legs vary in every race. So it's It's not a standard. It's like a medley of sorts on Ah, the track. Good word. Oh, PS listeners, we're putting together a rundown lexicon because every week Maddie and I um, pat ourselves on the back and pat each other on the back for our linguistic skills. Honestly, pretty pedestrian words. We shouldn't really be patting ourselves on the back. Well, I'm still going to do it. No, I appreciate it. I'm proud of it. But I'm saying if there's some listener who's like, honestly, these are very commonplace. Very simple words. Then I would say, 
I don't disagree with you. No, so you can choose not to utilize our lexicon. However, I guarantee you that not many people know what Ekaden means. Maddie and Kate's so word of the day it. today is Ekaden. Ekaden. Kate, continue. No problem. So um, the relays are like a huge part of Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. So to the point where like most corporations have like a corporate professional Ekaden team and they draw runners from all over the world to help like pad their teams a little bit. Fun fact, I was recruited to a Japanese Ekaden team three years ago. Kate, that's actually huge. I know. It was, it was, it almost happened. Was that your I, running peak? I, I, Obviously, thank I'm you. kidding. <laughs> but it might have been. <laughs> Just um, so everyone knows, Kate's a former Canadian oh, record holder. So obviously that was a joke. But, but it was going. it could have been an amazing adventure. And yeah. I came actually pretty close to to saying yes. The problem was I was offered a spot on this Ekaden team in, I believe, late February. And I was told that I would have to pack up all my stuff in three weeks and move there, sight unseen. Um and the duration of time was for the remainder of that calendar year. And I could only leave for three weeks of the remainder of that calendar year to go do other things outside of Japan. I was going to be paid handsomely. And in fact, Jeff Schiebler. Yeah. Former. Former Canadian. Canadian half, no, current Canadian half, half marathon, marathon record, record holder. Yeah. yeah. He spent, I think, 10 years in Japan on an Ekaden team. And it's how he was able to retire. I don't think Jeff would have any problem have with me question. telling this, but I think he said he made an average of $170,000 a year. As, it was it was well into runner. the six figures, yes. And how many years ago was this? 15. So we're talking inflation. He's like making like a quarter of a million dollars a year to be a runner. Yeah, in Japan. How do I get on this thing? <laughs> well, I was going to say, if you're ever looking for like a post 800 meter career, I trained for cross country. There you go. I could do it. You could do the 5K leg. Yeah, I'll do the 5K yeah. leg. And but but all of this speaks to how big a deal it is in Japanese culture. Which the the way I'm rounding this out is just by saying it is incredible that 400 men university age broke 70 minutes and a half marathon. But it's not completely surprising when you consider what a big deal it is. I'm quitting track. Okay. Yeah. Maddie has just announced retirement. <laughs> I'm quitting track. I think I've found my calling. I would like to switch my training and move to Japan. And extra fun little thing, you get to wear a sash. I know. When you're running, which yeah. is what they use instead of a baton for the handoff. And the sash is called, sorry, going to really blatantly check my notes here. The sash is called a tasuki. And it represents the, it's kind of gross, but like the combined sweat of every runner in a communal effort towards. Super cool. Yeah towards a common goal but hygienic Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of stuff about running that's a little questionable on the hygiene front so if you get if you're grossed up by this yeah you're in in for uh in for a treat when you get into the rest of the the sport but um yeah big deal awesome awesome and i've got a 10-year plan now so you know perfect pretty cool yeah you set yourself up for like actual life retirement Mm -hmm. yeah fantastic my parents are gonna be so happy (laughs) you made a living at running (laughs) You can call yourself a professional athlete yeah, without an asterisk. <laughs> yeah, they're still they're, they're still waiting. <laughs> they're oh, well, still waiting. As for are that. most of our parents. <laughs> anyway, cool stuff happening in Japan. Keep that in the back of your mind if you ever decide to. Uh, I mean, you know what would be great? What qualify for Tokyo twenty twenty and then just stay. Perfect. Maddie's life plan life, has just life been mapped out. Doesn't work that way, Kate. Don't tease me like that. Well, speaking of things working out really well for female runners, mm. take us to our next story, Maddie. So Letizanet Gide of Ethiopia broke the women's 15K world record in the Netherlands over the weekend. She ran 44.19 for 15K, which en route to that time, she split a 29.44 for 10K, which is a world best, but couldn't be ratified because it's a point-to-point course right. it's within a 15k which is already like a fairly new world record right. category anyway 2944 woman road 10k okay wait that was just her first 10k that was and then she kept going no but then her last 10k was 29 12 which was i think the actual world best oh that's what i'm referring yeah. to yeah so sorry but that's no, what but i'm referring like, to that's how remarkable it is that you would be confused by thinking that that's a women's world best because 29 44 is unfathomable and then to continue as well (laughs) and then she went on to run 29 12 for her last 10k just for context again for the average listener here because i couldn't really put this in context either her overall average for this 15k was 257 per kilometer a little more context what was kipchoge's pace per k 
because it was not much more than 10 seconds off that if it was. 253? I think it was. I think it might be only- Or 252? Something like that. Like only five seconds per K. Now, mind you, it was for a marathon, but still. But still. (laughs) Yeah. She she's a woman and he's the best who ever lived right yeah she, well and i mean the same could arguably be said about her in terms of the fastest woman on the planet yeah she demolished jocelyn jipkos guy's former 15k world record by over a minute and who just ran a killer full to win yes. new york and she's the half marathon world right. record holder so she's in good company ms gide wild it, i how, do we do we know what she's run for a marathon i don't think she has Ooh. I know. Stay tuned. Fun, eh? That'll be really fun to see. Yeah. And coming back across the pond, just in case any of you Canadian and particularly Ontario listeners are jonesing for your next fix of your Canadian road racing scene. By the time this episode comes out, the window will already be open. We're recording on Tuesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, the 20th of November, the window for registration opens for both Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon 2020 and the Oasis Zoo Run 10K 2020. And we and recommend <laughs> you get on top of both yeah. of those. Actually, one works kind of well as a base builder for the other, dare I say. No, that's actually really true, especially because the Zoo Run, it's not, it's never particularly fast because the course is like really windy and it's just not known as a fast course, but it's a good strength course. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like tougher than an average 10K in a way. And then because Scotia is relatively flat, you kind of get the payoff of like a flatter course, but longer for the marathon. Yeah. And if you're looking, if you plan on running a fall marathon and you just want to do some fun stuff in the spring great way to do it and still yeah. feel fresh in the fall totally that's our little plug for canada running series events mm-hmm. make sure you sign up folks nate reach of victoria won his first world championship title at the para world games this past week and it was super exciting he set a championship record he ran a 402 04 1500 meter very fast very fast so that was a super super impressive performance he's had a great 2019 overall i feel like every time i see him or hear about a performance of his he's set a new record or he's won something else and yeah. he capped off a super successful championship for the team yeah brent lakatos with two medals oh my gosh yeah. Him with the medal and we had a third we actually had two more medalists we had greg yeah. stewart one yeah. silver in the f46 discus also a Canadian record. Super cool. Personal best. And Renee Fossil, a bronze in the F38 discus, also a personal best and Canadian record. Fabulous. So we had a really great performance, uh, like round up by our team. Of course, I can't believe we're still talking about track in mid-November. Like, and like, not just like some funny little indoor meet right. somewhere. No, no the this world is championships the world in outdoor Dubai. championships. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic results by our Canadian para-athletes. Big things to come for the Paralympics next year. I'm so, so pumped. So pumped. It's going to be great. Moving on to the cross-country course. I got to write my favorite headline ever last Friday. Lay it on me. And I believe the headline was NCAA regional cross-country road race results. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone did like four double takes and they were like, wait, there's a typo in and here. And a few people and there called wasn't. me out in the comments and I was like, no, no, no. Read, Read the, the article. article. <laughs> that is exactly what it was. But so tell us about it because like the title is ridiculous, but the story is even more ridiculous. So, when you learn about like where it was and what the conditions were and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So there was the Northeastern Conference Championships taking place in Buffalo, New York. Mm-hmm. A snowy place. Practically. Our neighbor. So what did someone call someone called it basically Canada or almost Canada almost or something. Canada, yeah. which I thought was really funny. We're going to say so this race is taking place in almost Canada in November yep. and almost Canada in November, as we all know, unless you are in beautiful British Columbia. Yes. By the ocean where we're very jealous, where we're very jealous of you get snow. You just do. Yeah. So it snowed in almost Canada before <laughs> this race and they canceled the meet on the the traditional course, and they put it on the road. So they, so they turned a cross-country race into, into a, a road, road race. race. So it was the NCAA Northeastern Conference Championship cross-country road race. That is factual. So that tweet where someone called it almost Canada, 
I think yeah the the it was like it was a reply to someone who was like well oh no it was why did they hold it in almost canada and then someone was like it's the northeastern championships where should they have held it tampa yeah, like yeah. you don't have that many options plus nca the actual nca championship is in Terre Haute, indiana which also i is raced almost there canada five years in a row for cross country and it got snow every single year also guess what we race not in almost canada in, in canada, canada in november it's possible. <laughs> right. You put in the big pins, you put the Vaseline on the legs, and yeah. you just The stuff that gets go hot when it. the wind hits it, right. it gets kind of spicy. Yeah. <laughs> and then spicy. if you forget, you get in the shower after, oh, and you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Made that mistake. St. John's Newfoundland, second oh, year. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, the icy hot. The icy hot, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um. Anyway, this they was ran a, a road yeah. race. Some people won, but... <laughs> Everyone had vapor flies on. Like everyone, sorry, everyone had next percents on. Right. And for a bunch of cross country runners who would have shown up with cross country spikes, how every school with a Nike sponsor just magically went and got next percents for their whole team. So I have two theories about this. Yeah. The first is the more likely and the more practical, which is that so when I was in Duke University, uh, partway through my career there, we switched to being a Nike sponsored school and every team was sponsored by Nike. So all of Duke University was a Nike campus and we had a full time Nike rep employed for our campus specifically. Just doling so out Kate stuff could here just and there. like text this Nike rep and be like, Yeah, that's how it works. Hey, my pegs are a little worn out. Can I have like eight new pairs? And they just show up with eight new pairs of Nike Pegasus. Because that's exactly how non revenue NCAA D1 programs work. We just get everything we want. Yeah. Because we're like football and basketball. <laughs> anyway, yes, I was Kate very also fortunate. got a sports car in her time at Duke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> From a booster. Yeah. None of this is, none of this is fact. <laughs> this is all fiction. Um, but I would imagine that given in all of the hype around the, the next percents that they were pretty quick to jump on this opportunity. Um, the second scenario, which I actually like a lot better, which also came from a random tweet, was it must be a good time to be a running store owner in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> because again, they all would have shown up without the proper running footwear. It's true. Buffalo is a, pr- a relatively large city. There'd be a lot of different running stores where they could get these shoes. Yep, totally. And they probably just sold them all out. Yep, Absolutely. So I guess that's the silver lining to that. If you owned a running shop in Buffalo, you probably cleaned up. Um, Anyway, yes, ridiculous story. But it leads us to the fact that the NCAA Cross Country Championships are being held on Saturday, as we mentioned, Terre Haute, Indiana. And we've got like a whole whack of Canadians to look for. A whole whack of Canadians. Really exciting. We've got Andrew Alexander of Notre Dame University, Ehab El Sandali at Iona, Joshua D'Souza, also at Iona, Farah Abdul Karim at Ole Miss, and Michael Kochia, also at Ole Miss. Couple double ups there, eh? I guess that's kind of typical. Canadians yeah, tend Canadian, to go to yeah, the, same, exactly. the same program. Then we got three women to look for Maggie Smith of Villanova, mm-hmm. Taryn O'Neill, Northern Arizona, Arizona, and Shona McCullough of Washington. Yeah. And, and they I, could all do really well. They could all do really well. And yeah. I talked to Taryn today. So Taryn went to Villanova for her first year. Oh, that's right. And she's transferred to NAU. And she said that NAU made their fir- their women's team made the first NCAA championship in 12 years. Really? So, yeah. Because the, huh. everyone forgets that the women have sort of not been as good because the men Dominate. are so strong. Yeah. The men are back to back to back champions. That I'm sounds pretty sure. Right. I think they're three-time champions. Yeah. And they could be four. And so... You know, you just associate NAU with really strong cross country, but actually, these women are really—it's a resurgence in their in their women's distance program for That's sure. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Wow, go NAU, go NAU. Yeah, near and dear to my heart. It's a place we train in frequently for altitude. Yeah, she said that's been one challenge with moving there is that I can she imagine. has never <laughs> lived or trained at altitude before. Yeah, but evidently, like she's twenty fourth at her conference meet. She's running well. Yeah, so absolutely. she's making it work. Cool. Yeah, good for her. Go Canadians and the NCAA. We love We're it. Cheering for you. Oh, and stay tuned because I think Flow Track is the only one live streaming it, and it's a subscription. So if you don't have one, you're probably not gonna be able to watch but it. Honestly, but- Flow Track does a lot of stuff. If it's an Olympic year, if you're into track and field, cross yeah. country, they Little do road plug. running too. They're not asking us to say this, but I, it's a subscription worth having right. in, in my mind. Yeah, I would agree with that. Also, though, obviously, check back to runningmagazine.ca and all of our social feeds because we'll be covering it 
and how the Canadians, how the Canadians did, and how the meat went in yeah. general. Something all, something interesting always happens at a meat that big. Exciting. Finally, onto the trails. One of the most badass stories that I can Oof. remember us covering, and one that just sounds unbelievably pain. Every time we talk about the trails, we say forms of torture, and it's self-imposed torture, and they always, the participants always seem to love it. Oh, they're so into it. <laughs> you, you have to be like, I think I'm getting this impression of trail runners that they're masochists. I think trail runners are masochists, but like the nicest humans on the planet, which is a weird combination. But I, I really, that's the sense I get. Their, their pain thresholds are unparalleled. Mm-hmm. And they can endure so much, and yet they are, like, super kind and collaborative and, yeah. Great people. Yeah, a.k.a. the best people AKA in the world. the best people in the world. I know, it's so interesting. But barefoot runner Anna McNuff, that's right, barefoot yes. runner, covered 3,700 kilometers, 90, mara- 90 consecutive marathons. Yep. She wanted to do 100, but her injury made her stop, and she did all of this without shoes. Right. So she's British, yep. and she was running across... The UK. Yep. Um, she stopped in 143 towns along the way. And this whole thing came about because she wanted to help spread a message of resilience, especially to young women and, and to girls. So she stopped with a bunch of girl guide groups across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was joined by over 2,000 runners on her journey. I think most of them were wearing shoes. <laughs> but she like Instagrammed her entire her entire journey and showed some disgusting pictures of her feet, but also really cool shots of her with like huge groups of supporters and just like smiles on her, a smile on her face all the time. And she stayed with strangers yeah, she, like, like, along surfed. the way. She couch surfed. These yeah. people just like fed her. They put her up. They gave her a bed to sleep in, you know, and she did all these motivational talks. Like it's just, it's kind of a beautiful just humanity story. And like, I get that like running was her mode of transportation, right. but it was, it would be a really cool thing to just like kind of live off of and for the generosity of others. Yeah, absolutely. You know, almost 4,000 kilometers. Totally. And stay tuned because I am doing my best to try to get Miss Anna McNuff on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So you may be hearing from her directly in the coming weeks, we hope. And in the meantime, Anne Francis wrote a great article on runningmagazine.ca that we will link in the The write up. -up. Yep, absolutely. And check out all of her pictures because they're not all that gross. They're actually, she like puts like, she personifies her toes and puts smiley faces on them. I'm not really a foot person, so I had a bit of a hard time with it, but (laughs) it's cool gross. Not gross, gross. Yeah. Again, it's like that's the defining thing about trail runners. Kind masochists. Cool, gross. They, cool, gross. They're, they're just, yeah, a different breed. A different breed. So stay tuned to runningmagazine.ca for all of your NCAA cross-country coverage. And we will be back next week. For the week of November 18th, I'm Kate. And I'm Maddie. And we'll be back with more soon. <laughs>